One no 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 no. You're all too slow. Unfreaking touchable. I'm a freaking blur here. <laughs> hey guys, today I want to talk about Scout and how he plays in MVM and how you should play him. In this video I will be talking about five topics that revolve around MVM and Scout in general. First off, the task that the Scout has to deal with in MVM. Second, the loadout. Third, upgrades. Fourth, tactics. And last but not least, tips and tricks. I will leave timestamps down below if you want to skip towards any one of those specific topics. So, let's begin with tasks. The first and most important task as a Scout is staying alive. I mean, what did you expect? Dead players aren't really needed on the front. So, yeah, stay alive, that would be great. Second off, collecting money. Yeah, well, not for something that is a bit more serious. You are the one collecting money for the team. And since you are so fast, you can actually just pick up the money with the wind created by your speediness. This allows you to not only be the fastest to run towards the money, but also to be the one who can pick it up over range. Oh, and don't forget, money heals you, and it overheals you as well. So you can have tons of life by just speeding through whatever the robots throw at you, by just collecting money. Third, milk giants. Time for something that most players when they first start scout don't know about. The Mad Milk has an upgrade that allows it to slow down robots. So not only is your personal sperm container making the robots become some weird sort of moving Chernobyl-esque stem cell therapy on legs that heals you, but it also slows them down significantly, making Scout's milk even weirder than it already was. Fourth. Fan important targets. The fan, or fan of war as it really is called in game, is at least in casual one of the lesser used weapons. But it really shines in MVM. Having constant mini crits against giant robots is so useful that it is basically a must for anyone who wants to take Scout and MVM seriously. You can just go up to any giant and fan them, and they are getting tons of damage through your teammates. But remember, you can only mark one enemy at a time, so don't go hitting all the giants at once. And last but not least, deal damage. This is the last task of the Scout. Out, and I've specifically put it in last place because it really should be your lowest priority. Most people, when they really start off with Scout and MVM, are more focused on dealing damage since the Scout is hell of a good flanker and casual and comp. But here in MVM, we do things differently. The Scout is a support character first and a damage dealer second. So dealing damage is something that is only worth your second thought. But with that being said, you can still deal damage quite reliably. It all boils down to multitasking. If you are already on your way to collect money and you are just running by some robots, you might as well shoot them. So remember kids, as long as you don't forget to collect your money while shooting robots, your teammates won't break your knees. Okay, let's go to the loadout choices. All loadout choices that I'm presenting here are a suggestion made by me. You can always differ from those and experiment with whatever you want to pick. With that being said, let's get into that. Your first slot should be either stock scatter gun, soda popper or shortstop. The stock scatter gun is the most basic and still the most reliable source of damage that a scout can have. Meanwhile, the Soda Popper on the other hand is more focused on mobility. The ability that the Soda Popper gives you is 5 extra jumps as soon as it is loaded up. You have the hype meter that fills up whenever you deal damage. And as soon as that one is ready, you can just start off, jump wherever you want basically, and it allows you to get around the maps way quicker. And you know, if they can't hit you, they can't hurt you. The only exception to that will be your girlfriend, trust me. Them girlfriends know how to hurt you way more with words. The last one in the first slot would be the shortstop. The shortstop is more used for dealing massive amounts of damage to the tank. It can still reliably deal damage to robots, but sometimes is even used to push robots into pits. So it is a good all-rounder, I'd say. Next up, the second slot. I'll tell you as it is, milk all the way. Yeah, this one's just too good to pass up. The milk straight up saves lives with its ability to heal people when they shoot whatever is milk. And it also helps deal with giant scouts really well with the slowdown upgrade. Oh, and if you want to be nice to your medic, that is chasing a sentry buster with his uber saw, milk them busters. It helps medics collect their uber and lets you be the hero of the MVM medic main. Okay, let's hit up the last slot. It is basically just the fan. And yeah, as I've already explained before, the fan allows you to mark enemies for death and thus makes them take mini crits. So yeah, it is in my opinion one of the best. The only other melee weapon that comes close to its usefulness is the Sandman. But this one is something that is really specialized and I will talk about the Sandman later in this video. Let's head to the upgrades. I will show you how I handle my upgrades, but beware, all of this is subject to change depending on the map and the situation I am in. So experimenting is really, really, really wanted. First off, I'd personally go with jump height, speed and milk. I usually start with some speed and some jump height, allowing me to traverse the environment quickly and dodging any projectiles and giving bots firing bullets a hard time aiming at you as well. The second thing I upgrade is the speed reduction while soaked upgrade on the milk. This allows me to support my team with any big robots. 
Resistances are the ones I usually upgrade in the second or third wave. Here I will always have a look at the top screen that tells me what robots are coming and this allows me to adjust my upgrades accordingly. In the example in this video I see that there is a mix out of rockets, bullets and crit robots coming and thus I take one rocket, one bullet resistance and I take two crit resistance upgrades. Fire is the only resistance I almost never upgrade because usually pyros won't come close to you and even then afterburn is dealing almost no damage so I want to spend my money on some other upgrades. Upgrades. The last upgrades I would go with the scout are the weapon upgrades. I only upgrade weapons in the later rounds, since I want my resistances full, so I can reliably collect money without dying. In the example here, I upgrade my scatter gun on wave 4, after I fully upgraded the needed resistances. I took one projectile penetration, allowing my shots to go through multiple bots. I also took one reload and one firing speed that allows me to fire faster in the upcoming rounds. Let's talk tactics. Now, it's just a few sentences about what to do and not to do. First off, dodging projectiles and bullets with sheer speed and jumping. During the upgrades, I already mentioned this point, but always try to dodge projectiles and bullets with jumping. This not only allows you to take no damage, but everything that deals damage and goes up has almost no chance of hitting your team either. The only exception to this is pills from demo bots, but even then it gives your team more reaction time on incoming projectiles. Second point, using cover smartly. This one should be common sense, but most of the time it isn't. Try hiding behind stuff to not take damage while flanking for example. In the clip I'm using I am playing on Manhattan and there are laser heavies. I don't want any of that damage so I wait till most of them are dead and only then will I go out to collect the money. Heavies especially laser heavies, tend to keep you flying in one spot, so I wait for them to die. Avoiding choke points is another big point. As a scout, it is your goal to go around robots in order to collect. I usually try to come from the sides of the robots, or if there's a choke point, like the tunnel on Rottenburg for example, I will try to go another round. If there's money behind those robots in the tunnel, just go through the shop for example. There's always spots that you need to flank around. Try to be creative, try to find ways, don't try to dash straight through robots. If there's a choke point, there's a high chance you will die. The last point will be searching where money could potentially be. Scout is a class that punishes you for not paying attention. You need to somewhat know where robots are coming from and where the teammates could have killed stuff in order to collect the money. Sometimes your team splits into two parts and not everyone is collecting money when it is in front of them. So it is up to you to somewhat know where the money is. This is the hardest aspect of the scout though. So if you lose some money, don't punish yourself too hard. And don't take those idiots that flame you for losing like one dollar seriously. This can always happen and sometimes the money even bugs through walls so you don't even have a chance to collect it. Okay, I will end this video with just a few tips and tricks that I learned during my time of playing MBM. First off is a submeta class that is the tank destroyer scout. If you want to have fun and want to destroy some tanks rather quickly, try fully upgrading the shortstop. This one paired with crit canteens will just chew through tanks. It deals a ton of damage. The second one is shooting while collecting. Always try to shoot while collecting rather than doing one or the other. You need to collect that is your primary goal but if you manage to shoot while collecting, the damage you deal will rack up over time as well. The last tip I have, or you know, kind of alternative gameplay I'd say, is the Sandman instead of the fan. This is an odd tactic and I've already teased it earlier in this video. If you use the Sandman instead of the fan of war, you are able to upgrade the amount of balls you have and you can upgrade it so that the balls and the bat mark enemies for death and thus making it some sort of fan. But it's still one enemy at a time that can be marked. What makes the Sandman special is depending on your Skill. The balls themselves, if you are far away from robots and you manage to hit their head with a ball, not only are you marking them for death, but you are also able to stun them for a bit, making the bet a high risk and high reward fan that allows you to completely stun robots if you are hitting quite a few balls on their head. So it really is skill dependent and for someone that is starting out as scout I would not recommend it. If you however have a really good team, if you know that you can dick around a bit, try that out for a bit. This is a meta or you know, this is a tactic I haven't seen many scouts do and actually I've got to know this from a friend of mine and he's the only one I've ever seen it use. I've used it myself for a bit as well and it is really fun but you really need to hit those heads otherwise it will be just a complete waste of time because you have to run back and collect the money as well. Okay, I thank you all for watching this video, especially all those new people that came through the original guide that I made for all the classes. I welcome all of you here. If you have some requests or stuff you want to talk about, let me know in the comments below. You know, if I I have some things, some tips, some tricks that I've missed. If you want to talk about something else, I'm always up for discussion. I will always be there and always try to talk to everyone. With that being said, if you liked it, like the video. If you want more of those guides, why not subscribe? Why not stay here? And with all that being said, I thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.